Hey guys, it's SRC Reptiles and today I have little baby Maple here with me. And today I'm just going to do a little video just kind of giving you guys an idea of how to safely handle newly hatched babies, which this little guy is actually going to be a month old come December 1st. So let's see, today is the 27th of November, so he is almost a month old. He's been doing really good with handling. When they come right out of the egg, they are not going to need to be handled at all except for being fed. I honestly personally suggest feeding these guys by hand. So what that all entails is I use a little coffee stir straw. I mix the food up with that and then I use that straw. I dip it in the food and then I put it by their mouth or I'll dab a little bit on the sides of their uh, gums here like on the sides of his mouth which I'll kind of get him a little bit closer. There we go. So on the side of his mouth here is where I'll dab the food. So I don't put it anywhere close to the nostrils. If you do accidentally get down the nostril, don't freak out. They'll lick it off on their own. But try to aim for not getting it on their nose. Oh, he's gone out of focus again. I'll just sit right here. But anyway, as you can see, he's very well behaved. So with this guy, um, I don't ever handle him except for getting him out to eat. And I had got him out to see if he wanted to eat a dubia roach. He was not interested in it, so I figured he's being very well behaved right now. As you can see, he's not really running or doing much, and I've had him out for like five minutes. So most of the time, five, ten minutes is max for a little tiny one-month baby. In fact, I would say five minutes is more of the plus, or is more of the max. But um, being that I've been breeding for quite a while, I'm pretty used to knowing how to handle them. But I just wanted to make this video for people that for some reason felt the need to go out and get a baby this size for their first crested gecko. I would never suggest that. I would honestly say if you have never owned a crested gecko to get one that's at least six to eight months old, not a tiny little baby. Because for example, when I bought Ember from the pet store, she was probably like three months old. She weighed, I think, two or three grams. I believe three grams was the lowest I have recorded in my book. But um, that's like the weight of a, actually, yeah, that's the weight of a, about a three or four month old baby, Crested Gecko. That's very young. I personally would never suggest uh, anybody going out and getting one that young. But just to give you an idea, this is how tiny he is. And last time he was weighed, he was almost two grams. I guarantee now he's probably like two and a half grams or something like that. He has obviously grown quite a bit. But um, when you're handling little itty bitty babies, before I kind of stray off any more than I already have, um, aside from the fact, like I said again, I would definitely suggest if you're watching and you want to buy a Crested Gecko, I would not suggest um, anything under six to eight months old. Honestly, if you could get like a year old, that'd be even better. They're better established. They're, you're not having to worry about there being any weird things happening that somehow, sometimes happens with babies where they just die. You gotta go through a breeder that's very trustworthy to make sure that something like that doesn't happen if you're getting one younger than that age. I would definitely not suggest going to Petco. But anyway, or PetSmart, either of those two. In fact, you've gotta be even careful about breeders you buy from. I would just make sure that they have been in the business for a while or at least they know what they're doing and they're not hiding anything or aren't acting sketchy. I've had too much experiences from people like that, so I'm just saying. But anyway, um, I don't know if you've been watching my hands. You probably have. I don't know. But um, so what I normally suggest when it comes to holding these guys is doing a lot of hand walking. Um, I also suggest sitting close to the floor like I'm sitting on the floor right now. So anytime they jump, if they happen to jump off of your hand and hit the floor or anything like that, you're not real high up. I'd also suggest not holding them anywhere where there's tile, wood floor, anything like that. If you don't have carpet anywhere in your house, then sit on a rug or something like that, or on a bed or a chair or somewhere safe that if they jump off of your hand and land somewhere, it's not going to harm them. So when they're itty bitty tiny like this, normally they don't take too much uh, of an impact. They don't weigh much, thus they really don't hurt themselves too much when they're falling. Um, unless it's from like a really high place or if it's, you know, again, tile or wood or something. But with this baby, this carpet in the room is super fluffy. And one time when he did jump out of my hands, uh, he just bounced right off the floor. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, most of the time, uh, I definitely suggest a quiet place to handle them. Obviously, you don't want to not talk or make any kind of noise. You just want to be, you know, gentle about it. So this baby is obviously used to me talking at regular voice, regular volume because 
I've had people over, um, like my parents, and I've showed them the little baby. And my boyfriend comes in here and talks to me when I'm feeding geckos. So it's like, he's used to hearing voices. You don't want it to be so quiet with your gecko that any sound just startles it. Like, you do want to expose it to noise, but have it in a nice quiet room in the house. Like, my reptile room is just the reptiles. Most of the time there's no one in here, so it's nice and peaceful for them. But uh, hand walking is mainly the thing I would always suggest, so that's pretty much when you let the baby walk from one hand to another, which he's not being super active right now. Um, I can get one of my adults out, even though they're not really that much more active, honestly, because they're very laid back. Um, but with babies, they're going to be a little bit more active. Um, also, good luck anticipating their jump patterns when they're this young, which I just happened to somehow catch him when he jumped onto my little uh, arm right here underneath my elbow, whatever that part is called. He jumped on my arm and I happened to have my hand under there and caught him. But a lot of times they can be looking straight ahead and jump off to the left or the right. So it's really hard to anticipate which direction they're going to jump. But most of the time they will bunch up their hind legs and their back, kind of getting ready to initiate the jump, which I don't know if he'll do it for me here. Let me see if I can get him to demonstrate it. I don't know if you can really tell, but he's kind of taking the posture, but he's not really completely committing to it because even though he's got his back kind of curved in, he's uh, not got his feet ready. So, okay, more this posture. You see what he's doing right here? More like he is fully prepared to get ready to jump. Uh, he moved by the time I'd done that, but I'm going to see if I can give him a little pet to get him to jump. Boop. He was really quick. So anyway, guys... That's pretty much with the babies, what I would honestly suggest. And like I said, it takes a little bit of work, or actually I don't recall saying this, but it takes a little bit of work and patience to get them to this point at only almost a month old. Like he's doing really well. A lot of the times at this age, they don't settle down until they're like three months old. So if you have a baby and he's all kinds of crazy, there's a lot of different things that can go into play, but this one's baby in particular has a very laid back mom and the father just kind of chills and does nothing too. Um, so if the parents are spastic, that might affect them a little bit, but even then I've had babies that act nothing like their parents. So I'm going to go ahead and put him away because it has been long enough that he's been out. It's been seven minutes I've been recording. I don't find him to be stressed at all. I've tried to take him off my finger and he does want to jump in there. So I'm going to have to use both hands. But, um, and also just to give you guys an idea, this is the size of container that he stays in. And he'll be in this until he's three months old. This is normally the size I keep him in. And in the winter, like it is right now, because you can see here, he's moving. So I'll tilt it. This entire thing is open mesh. So you want the babies to be a little bit more humid. And then warmth wise, it's sitting at 73 to 74, reading the different thermometers, only because the heat lamp in the bearded dragon's tank gets up to like 115. Um, 110 is more honestly what it gets to, but I've seen it hit 115 a couple times. But most of the time, what my thermometer is reading, it says 110. But that heat by itself emitting into the room and most of the time the door is closed except for today because I'm home obviously so I can have the door open while I'm here. Normally my boyfriend's cat never roams in here but the whole point that I was trying to make with this is um to keep in the humidity for the winter you can literally just take a wash rag. This is just an old wash rag I have and you can just lay it over half of the tank and that will cover half of that mesh and it'll keep the humidity held in so that when you go to mist Normally I'll mist once in the morning and once in the evening, except last night we had a huge rainstorm that came through, so the humidity was doing pretty good this morning, so I didn't have to worry about misting. But um, normally when you're running the heater, whether you have a space heater or you've got just, you know, house heating, um, that dries the air out pretty quickly. So most of the time I will mist once in the morning, once in the evening. Uh, in the afternoon, like, it's not as necessary unless you see it drop below like 45%. If it's dropped below 45%, then yeah, just give it a couple little sprays. You don't have to douse it down to where it's dripping. Obviously, there does need to be a dry out period. You just don't want it to get super low, if that makes sense. So this here is magma, and I just woke him up. <laughs> so as you can see, this side of him is fired down, and this side of him is fired up. So this is called misfiring. 
It normally happens when one side of the gecko's body is facing darkness while the other side is facing light. The body kind of naturally adjusts its color to kind of blend in better with its surroundings. So it's kind of cool when you see it happen because you've got it split down the middle, <laughs> as you can see there. So it's kind of neat. And then also right here where his leg was, you can see where his uh, balls are, <laughs> that they're all fired down in that area, but then it darkens up on his back. It's funny because his legs were stretched upwards. I don't think he'll do it when I'm holding him, but his legs were kind of like this, like that, and they were covering that area so that it was not exposed to light, thus it didn't darken up, which was kind of cool. But anyway, Magma is going to be nine years old next year, so he's not really a prime example of a young crested gecko, but this is about the average size that they get as an adult male. Now, his son's actually a little bit bigger than he is, but Magma normally sits at about 50 to 60 grams. Most of the time, based off of his, like, over the years, he sits at 55 to 56 grams, but occasionally he will get to that 60s and stay there all year. So right now, if I had to guesstimate, he's probably at his 54 stage. So I've had him long enough. I've had him since he was, I want to say, a year and a half to two years old. So I've had Magma for quite some time. He's very well behaved, but I will say he is my only male that I own that is horny all the time. So if I've held a female before holding him, he'll try to mate with my hand. So that's just something some of the boys do. But as you can see here, he's pretty chill. He's used to being handled. In fact, he's one of my better adults when it comes to when people come over and they want to get an idea um, how big the babies will get if they were to buy one from me, how they'll behave and all that stuff. So obviously each one will behave different, but um, most of the time, all of mine, because I handle them a lot, they turn out pretty laid back. So as long as a person continues to hold them and they get used to their surrounding, they feel safe with you, then they're pretty relaxed. So I'm sure Magma's not too pleased that I woke him up. He's just kind of like, I don't want to see you. He wants to crawl away. Most of the time he's always trying to climb up here onto like my shoulder or something. So I'm just going to stick him up there so he can kind of chill. Um, but yeah, pretty much that's my little video that I was going to make. I would have gotten... Oh, Lily's on the move. She is running. <laughs> she sees that I've got one of the crested out and see she sees them when they're big but not when they're tiny. But yeah, so most of the time, you've got a crested gecko that has been handled really well and it's not just been a breeder that has had no contact with people, then yeah, buying an adult's just fine. I mean, hell, Magma, like I said, was like a year and a half to two years old when I bought him. He'd been bred like seven or eight times because he'd had like multiple owners. I went and looked it up because there's actually a website where you can search an animal's uh, genetics for like uh, reptiles. It's called like iHerp. I believe is the website. Um, I don't think it'll let you make an account anymore. At least it didn't let me. It just left it at pending approval. So I think the website's pretty old, but I found a lot of information about him on there as well as on Facebook just by searching. Um, multiple people that have owned this animal before I was able to purchase him. So I'm his final destination. He's retired breeder. He doesn't breed no more. He's just my male. He's my sweetie boy. And it's funny because Mischief um, got his tameness from his father. And you can see now he's starting to fire down because he's starting to relax again. But Mischief got his tameness from his father. And luckily he didn't get his horniness from him because Mischief has been bred before. But I can hold females and then hold him and he does not try to do that to me. So thank God. Because <laughs> Magma is just a little obnoxious when he does this. But... As you can see, he's being really good now. He's just laying on my hand, being super sweet. So this is normally how one's supposed to behave when it's been handled and treated well and all that stuff. And of course, he's chonky because he's well taken care of. <laughs> so, but anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this video now because I've been talking and stuff for a long time. And I'm sure y'all are not even here. And if you still are, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this informative or interesting or cute, whatever you want to say. Hopefully you liked it. So anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good rest of your day.